Okay, so we're here on the farm of um, Patrick William Stokes here in Kilsheel in South Tipperary. Um, Will here is the signpost farmer for, uh, for Tipperary. And uh, so look, we're out here in the field of um, winter barley. Um, Will grows a, a range of different crops here on the farm. So we'll just get a, an introduction to the farm from Will and uh, just uh, the different crops that are grown here. Thanks, Connor. Um, so yeah, we're farming maybe roughly around a, a 100 hectares. Um, we're on a six year rotation, um, try and get a break crop every third year. So usually it's uh, potatoes, wheat, barley, then into peas or beans, wheat and barley. That's the plan, but it doesn't always work out like that. Um, we throw oats in there the odd time and uh, we just try and I suppose react to the situations that are ahead of us. Um, at the moment we're, we're predominantly ploughing but we are looking at heading in the strip till direction. Um, we have one field in particular that we've uh, strip tilled with a Claydon for the last four years and definitely see the, the benefits in it. Now it does, there is a bit of transition um, in the first couple of years but um, we definitely see the, the benefits in doing that. Um, we also have a, a disc that we use uh, with legs on it, a tulip, that this year for the first year we've trialled actually just running that instead of the plough and going straight in with the, the, the one pass, um, Parahara and Suffolk Coulters and I was actually surprised at how well that worked and going forward we'll probably um, invest in a disc drill just to try and get a better placement in direct drills so that's that's really where we're at Connor so far anyway. Okay and uh, cover crops on the farm, any ground that's, any ground left bare for, for spring crops or is there cover crops or natural regeneration in what way? Yeah so the only spring crops that that we plan to have is the um, peas or the beans uh, usually and, and the potatoes obviously so that ground is is we put in cover crops so we've been doing that for the last I'd say five years um, up till this year we were just uh, tillage radish and phacelia just concentrating on uh, soil compaction and soil conditioning but this year we added buckwheat and we added uh, mustard to the mix just to bulk up the density and we planted earlier we were previously planting in the first week of September and it was a little bit um, at the density or the, the soil the bulk that we were getting wasn't great so this year we started as you can see the second field down we started planting that in the first week of August um, and as you can see, it, it, it really made a fantastic difference to, to what we got out of it and what we're getting out of it. Good cover, plenty of, um, as I say, bulk density there and looking forward to put that back into the soil in, in we we'll probably will leave it alone, I'd say, till middle of February at this stage and, and we'll see, we might try and direct drill peas into that. Um, we'll make a decision close to the time, I think. Okay, and as, as you mentioned already, you're using multiple, um, I suppose, establishment systems here with, with the use of um, minimum tillage and also the conventional plow, plow till sow method. What way are you seeing that, or is there a transition going more minimum tillage? or? Yeah, I'd like to get away from uh, in, inversion or ploughing. Um, I'd like to go to um, direct drilling, well, uh, strip tilling more so, um, and we're hoping to invest in, in a disc drill, something like uh, Valdestat um, Sprint or Spirit um, going forward. We're just, I suppose, trial and erroring. The Claydon is is a good job, but um, just not sure it's it's direction we want to go yet. Uh, might be something for the, the future. Whether we'll get to um, direct drilling, um, I don't know if our soils are, are that way. I'd be quite worried about drainage issues, but maybe we'll just keep an eye on the soils as we kind of develop through it. And if we do get to a point where we feel the soil can take um, the moisture or the rain that we get, we'll be um, happy enough to go direct drilling as well. But it's like anything, it's, it's uh, in transition and you just try and small steps and make mistakes and try and not make too many big mistakes and uh, yeah, get, get to where we, where we ultimately want to go is improving the quality of the soil, improving the number of worms in the soil is probably a big thing and obviously soil fertility. Um, they're the main things we're focusing on or trying to focus on at the moment. Okay, now just that you mentioned soil fertility there, I suppose the biggest question in most farmers' minds this year is uh, fertilizer or what's what's your plan for the coming year? Have you a fertilizer plan in place? And Yeah, um, so this year uh, will be the first year we'll, we're GPS soil sample the whole farm um, and get a, 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 an accurate uh, idea of what the fertility is in the farm uh, throughout the farm and then apply fertilizer accordingly we have 
Uh, we invested in a fertilizer spreader with GPS and the ability to use uh, soil maps to vary our rate spreading. Um, and I think that's the way forward, uh, especially with the costs the way they are. I think um, I know that the GPS soil sampling costs about three times, four times is more expensive than standard soil sampling. But what you get back in, especially in the year going forward and possibly the next couple of years, in the reduction in use of fertilizer, I think in, in the pocket is definitely, uh, it definitely makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that's, you know, we're, we're trying to get a mix of profitability here, along with improving the, the farm through uh, our actions, you know. Okay.